Shanghai. So, um, you know, there's been many martyrs of our movement, um, but I'm going to mention three names, which is Jay Stark, who, you know, he made the FGC9, and he was murdered by the German police, which was uh, 3D printed semi-automatic that is used by many rebel groups around the world, like the people in Myanmar fighting their authoritarian government. Um, McAfee, who we all know, and one of the early uh, pioneers who really promoted, who really, you know, kicked start cryptocurrency, which was Ross Ulbricht. And even this last week, we heard that, you know, he might be getting a presidential pardon. So pretty big news. So I dedicate, you know, my talk to these guys. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, so my name is Amir Taki, and I'm a free and open source software developer for over 20 years. And during uh, a lot of that time with other hackers, we squatted buildings to uh, found hack labs, which were centers where we worked on social and political technology, which is the kind of early precursors to hacker spaces. And um, I was also one of the first five Bitcoin developers. For most of my time in crypto development, I focused on strong anonymity. Um, I also worked for a Catalan cooperative and was a professional poker player. Uh, in 2015, I joined the YPG, where I fought on the front line against ISIS. And later, I left the YPG, and I was in Syria for three years working on economic projects. So anyway, enough about uh, myself. And in this talk, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, DarkFi. DarkFi is a L1 for uh, anonymous smart contracts. And, you know, I'm very excited to show you what we have. You know, we have limited time, but let's see how far we get. Um, so for some backstory, uh, the DarkFi is a project started with a project called Dark Wallet in 2013. And this is a project that I co-founded along with uh, Cody Wilson, who is the inventor of the 3D printed gun, and also Vitalik, who he left the project after a year to start Ethereum, with uh, also a team of Spanish hackers. And you can actually see our initial announcement video on YouTube if you search for Dark Wallet. So I definitely recommend people to see that as a piece of history. Um, and yeah, no, everybody today in Bitcoin is, uh, is, is, you know, like, well, I'm into guns and crypto anarchy. But back then, they were, people were coming and going to me, Amir, you know, you're an you're a expert on uh, developing software, but I'm an expert on marketing. Let me tell you how it's done. We need to uh, make Bitcoin friendly for the regulators. And so I created this uh, software, which is the precursor to Open Bazaar. It was called Dark Market. It was actually a petition on Reddit to get me to rename the software because it would scare away, you know, uh, Bitcoin's mainstream acceptance. So you can actually see the response to that, which is the Dark Wallet Alpha video, which is also on YouTube. So at the time, the Bitcoin Foundation, they were attempting to capture Bitcoin. And a lot, of, a lot of people would make you believe that the block size debate was a technical debate. It wasn't. It was really about kicking out um, Gavin Andreessen and his cronies who were trying to, um, they, they, had, they were trying to assert their power over the project. And so they, and I, can, I can talk more about this, but this is not my talk. So also the name, so Dark Wallet was our response to that. And the name actually comes from a quote by the director of the FBI. He made a speech in 2013 about what he's called the going dark problem. So he says, unfortunately, the law hasn't kept pace with technology, and this disconnect has created a significant uh, public safety problem. We call it going dark. So that's the history behind Dark Wallet. So, uh, there's a quote by Ernst Junger, he's a German philosopher, and he says, um, the cult of crime 
is so characteristic of our times. Its dimensions and extent are easily underestimated. And it would be no exaggeration to say that three quarters of the literature deals with criminals, with their deeds and their milieu, and that its appeal lies precisely there. This indicates how far the law has become dubious. People have a sense of being under foreign occupation. And in this relation, the, ki the criminal appears a kindred spirit. Now, it's not to say that, um, you know, we're advocating for, you know, uh, mafia, for criminality, but there is this all pervasive sense that we are colonized by the nation state. And that's why there is this kind of fascination or interest in all of our media with, with criminality, with, with uh, law breaking, precisely because the law itself has, been, has become dubious. And, you know, we, ha we, we're, we, we have to differentiate ourselves from criminals in our morals. We are forest rebels. You know, we, the forest, we use it for cover and concealment to move around. We have a philosophy, unlike uh, mafias. But this label of the criminal, it's something that the state has put on us. And the true criminals, they are the true criminals. We all know about their pedo rings. And, you know, I'm not going to go into conspiracies, but even just the banal kind of everyday evil. For example, two million dead in Iraq. So when they come and they say that our software and our networks, which are for human freedom, are used uh, by criminals, they're, they're hypocrites because they are the real criminals. And everybody that advocates for crypto regulation is doing an open and official provocation against liberty and sovereignty. And all of those who advocate for it are domestic enemies of the people, and they must be absolutely opposed because the right of people to keep and deploy cryptography should not be infringed. So DarkFi, so all of these projects, which they're based off of the RegFi narrative, they advocate for regulation. And their whole, their whole thing is that as much as the regulators work with them, you know, they can kind of get into the halls, not really into the halls of power, but, you know, like kind of on the doorstep, you know, like uh, 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 catching the crumbs from, from the master, but they never really be in. And as soon as that power turns against them and says, hey, you, you know, you're breaking the law, their entire uh, narrative kind of crumbles down because they become criminals, whereas, DarkFi draws power from that. That's why DarkFi is powerful. Because the more that they crack down on DarkFi, the more it validates our thesis, the more that we say, look, this, this is the reality of the nation state of power unmasked. This is, how they, this is what they're really about. And th there's a video of this on, on YouTube that we made. It's called Lunar Punk and the Dark Side of the Cycle by Rekt, R-E-K-T. You can find that. And it's basically... Crypto now is, you know, it's in a moral crisis and it's coming up to a kind of fork in the road where things bifurcate, where people have to pick a side. And, you know, uh, the more the governments crack down on crypto, the more it drives people into either of these two camps. And the reg fire just becomes bolted down, it becomes useless, it becomes unusable, you know, you need to KYC, so many restrictions, but the true crypto goes to the, reg goes to the, the underground, to the, you know, this is what we call dark fire, this is why we call ourselves dark fire. And the more that they crack down, you know, the more that we allow unhindered uh, free use of crypto technologies, and the more the, they, they see that they're powerless and the more that they become uh, uh, more restrictive. And so therefore, and this, this, this could be um, a very healthy thing for crypto because it allows crypto to come into its own being. A lot of people have said like, oh, you know, all this stuff, all this software that we thought would be made in 2012, we were like, oh yeah, the crypto anarchy revolution is just around the corner just going to happen. We can just relax, you know, and it will unfold. It hasn't happened. And we, it's kind of like we need to mobilize. We need to, like, move towards making that reality happen. And, um, and 
you know, all these other people that have come in, all these, you know, uh, charlatans, key opinion leaders, influencers, uh, all the, you know, the people that control the levers of power. Because how does the system work? The system prints the money, and then they put it in, in, in their funds, um, and the funds are like, oh, yeah, I'll allocate a bit to crypto. And then those, they're, they're staffed with uh, a bunch of yes men. And then crypto projects, you know, they're like creating, they're like, oh, yeah, we're going to change the world. We're going to uh, unlock human freedom, human potential. But we're going to sell our tokens to these people who are, who are getting money from the state, essentially. And then those people are like, oh, yeah, you can't talk about any of that ideology stuff. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's not good. And so everybody, and that's why all the projects become cucked. And then they, you know, they've got, they've got too much money and they hire HR people and they like blow all their staff. They don't create real value. So it's, that's the like state that we're in. And, you know, maybe this apocalyptic extinction level event, which like, you know, destroys 90% of all that, all those people that don't believe in anything, just there for the money essentially. And maybe they maybe they talk about ideology on Twitter, but as much as it like suckers you in the audience, those people are going like. Uh, then when the money dries up, they're like, oh, okay, like I'm going to go into AI now. That's the new thing, you know, whatever uh, bullshit. So, uh, and yeah, you, you, when you look at now how they're cracking down on crypto, uh, tornado cash, samurai. You know, there's like a whole bunch of things that you, you, you can discuss, but I'll, I'll discuss three of them, which is, firstly, uh, in, in the court proceedings, you can see all their internal chats are public. Like, and, 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 they're, they're, and they're going like, oh, you know, this guy, he's obviously a ringleader. He's obviously a guy that's responsible uh, for running this project. And therefore, you know, he's responsible for this project product, which is used for, you know, uh, buying sweaters online, as an example, whatever. Uh, so, uh, so that's one thing, the communications. So, um, yeah, we see all these projects that are like, yeah, we're, we're anonym, anonymity, privacy, project. join our Discord, put it in the trash, into the trash it goes. Second, they have a DAO, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're in a DAO, yeah. And then they're like, oh, but you control, you know, X amount, X percent of tokens, you know, 50% of the tokens. This is like a public shareholder company. So you actually own this DAO. You own this treasury. So we're going to put, that's another reason they get sent to jail. And thirdly, running infrastructure. So they're like, oh, yeah, it's a wallet for, you know, privacy mixing but there's a guy running a server. So they're not really peer-to-peer. -peer. In the case of Tornado Cash, it's the limitation of Ethereum. Just a little side note, FYI, where Ethereum, um, if, I, if I do a mix with you, I need to pay the fee for the transaction. So how do I pay that fee? If I pay that fee, I dox myself. So you need some kind of thing called a relayer, and that's what they were hosting, and that's what they got done on. So it's actually an architectural problem in ETH as well. So... Uh, yeah, so I just, so in dark fine now, uh, that's the last one. Oh, yeah. so we are already, um, we don't use Discord or any of that. We use our own fully anonymous peer-to-peer -peer chat. So all of the messages are unlinkable. So um, if I say something, then... And this is just like a daemon, but with an IRC client joint to the front end. So if I uh, say something, uh, and then you know later someone goes, "Oh, you know, you said that with that nickname." It's like, no, it could anybody could say that. I've got plausible deniability because all the messages are completely unlinkable. So okay, you've got peer-to-peer -peer network. How do you stop people spamming? We can use rate limit nullifiers because. Uh, you stake some money, and every epoch, you can only send like one message. That epoch could be like five seconds, for example. And if you send two messages in an epoch, people can do a kind of reverse Shamir secret sharing scheme, calculate your private key, and slash you. So it's not that you're like paying for every single message, but to be able to post, you need to stake. And 
if you if you spam the network, then you get slashed. And there's like and there's a fully anonymous way to do that. And so you can and so you can send messages, and all the messages are unlinkable. And then people go, oh well, if it's anonymous, how can you do about like trust and stuff like that? Well, we have private groups, we have DMs. Actually, works very well anonymous systems, in my opinion. And so we don't have to use Discord. We don't have to use any centralized. We don't have to run any centralized instance. Like you know, before we were using Matrix, we had 250 people in our room. It was lagging. It was slow. It's crappy software. Not only that, Matrix messages are linkable. You have an account. Every time you send a message, they're linked. So we have our own system that's fully anonymous. We also use it for tasks. Uh, issue, issue tracking, so we don't need to use GitHub. So it's about minimizing your dependence on centralized infrastructure. Just a side note, you know, we didn't get around to making the Git backend yet, but we're using um, Codeberg, where you can make anonymous accounts with Tor. You can you can commit to the project fully anonymously as a developer. So you have a complete closed ecosystem that's completely anonymous. So that's the first thing about the the chats, like linking pe what people say to what they do. Originally, we wanted to speak very freely about the project, not have to hide in private groups out of fear of retribution. We want the community to be involved. So we were like, oh, we have to have a public space where we can be fully anonymous. I don't know any other, any other uh, uh, software that exists that allow you to be fully anonymous like this, unlinkable messages. So that's the first thing about implication. The second thing about DAO membership, being a member um, of a DAO, having a stake, we made the world's, and as far as I, only, I know, the only fully anonymous DAO where uh, all the members are completely anonymous, the, the, the uh, tokens, the governance tokens, the actions, the treasury, Everything about the DAO is completely anonymous. The voting, you can't link. It's just, it's just something that's encrypted on the blockchain. You can't see anything that's happening. And there's, you, know, you can have a treasury there and you can manage it. So that's so the that's second issue. They cannot, they cannot sanction a DAO they don't even know exists or a DAO that they can't even see it, see what's happening, how many people are in it or what's what. It's completely dark. Thirdly, Infrastructure, you know, we need to create uh, uh, software that's uh, fully peer-to-peer. Uh, so, ah, oh, two minutes. Oh, fuck. Okay, uh, Darkfire will be merge mined with Monero. So, I'll just shoot that out there. <laughs> uh. Amir, I'm not going to cut you off, man. Just do your do your talk, okay? Okay. Uh, Node Explorer, uh, other command line tools. You can see. Um, now, so now. Um, okay, I I hate the web. I hate the web browser. I think the web was a mistake. Um, I also hate uh, UI frameworks. You know, uh, I think people are writing garbage software that looks ugly. You know, it lags, like when you open Signal, it's full of white space everywhere. You know, you open these apps and they've got like massive buttons with like 20 pixel border around them. And, you know, I just, I just can't use that, you know, like. Um, and I remember, and in the 90s, we were promised the future of tech that was so cool. And we, ne we didn't get that. So, yeah, FOMA, I, I, I feel like I'm missing out. So we want to recreate that experience, and so now, and, and so now, instead of making, um, uh, you know, like the thing where people use MetaMask and you know they make a, a browser app, that's another thing. Hosted front ends. So now we're making our own platform where you can uh, load plugins into it, and this is just so far. Uh, we've been working on the the chat app and the wallet app, but it's like plugins into one application, and it's written in OpenGL, so it's our own UI framework that we're creating, because then you have the full power and the full flexibility to really create uh, uh, experience that is sci-fi and uh, magical with all the security properties that you want, and allowing people to download the apps peer-to-peer, -peer, uh, self-hosted, without having, without putting anybody in, in the way of liability. Um, so, 
Uh, yeah, as, as Darkfire, uh, what we're really shooting for is to expand the design space of anonymity and possibility for users. You know, uh, right now, there's this kind of meme, I've heard it a few times, goes, privacy is normal. And it's like, no, privacy, that's saying privacy is normie, essentially. It's like, no, privacy is exceptional. It's like special. It's like something valuable. And, um, and so, um, and so like, uh, and, and this, is, this is also part of the thing with Monero as well. They have, uh, they're, they're like, oh, privacy's cool. You know, that's, that's what we're rally, because privacy until now hasn't, um, ha like everybody's like, oh, why isn't it taken off as a narrative? And it's like, because, you know, uh, we, haven't, we haven't rallied people in terms of like the mimetic complex. Um, so, yeah, I, I will, so in terms of, so, oh yeah, I, I finished. So I'll just say that, you know, um, for, for developers as well, you know, we're providing you a comfy home. So, you know, join our chat, come work on something meaningful, have the opportunity to participate in the upside of a project early, you know, uh, let's, let's change this thing. So, thank you. So, what I didn't catch in that was actually um, timeline for the for the blockchain for the for the layer one deployment. Yeah, we're we're now releasing the final test net, and then we want to run that for a few months, and then we want to release the main net. But you know. God willing. <laughs> <You know. laughs> cool. And it's going to be just uh, expand a little bit more on the logic of merge mining with Monero because I think that's important technically for this room. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah. I mean, I'm not the consensus guy, but part of it is like, okay, originally we, uh, we were using proof of stake um, just because it's like more efficient, but then... Yeah, we were looking at a proof of stake and we were like, okay, but it's not anonymous. So we made an anonymous version of proof of stake, called, which was based off of a scheme uh, actually made by IOHK called uh, Ouroboros Crypsonus. But then we started getting into this really uh, difficult question about distribution because uh, proof of stake can be quite oligarchic. So then we were like, okay, well, we have to, at least in the initial phase, use proof of work as a bootstrap mechanism. But when you start to get into proof of work, then you have a security issue. So then we, we were just like, okay, it makes sense to do some kind of merge mining to gain the security from another chain. And we, we were like, well, Monero is like a natural fit. It's like, our, it's the closest community to us really. So it's also kind of like, and a lot of the, a lot, what's interesting about Monero community is the miners, they're not really operating a profit. Um, and it's very distributed. And generally in, in token allocation, you want to have a very even distribution. So that's very good in terms of dis a distribution question. Um, and, and, and also it's kind of like an airdrop to the Monero community as well. So I think actually Seth proposed that. I don't know if he's here, but anyway. Seth's not here. Um, do we have any questions for Amir, please? 